Well, this is lesson 10 and we're coming to conclusion in this series. Let me just uh, say a few brief points before we go on to lesson material. These 10 lessons should not be viewed as a rigid mandate. Rather, I've put in order the sequence of pedagogical ideas that I think uh, are best timed for your progress as a student. These concepts I present in the 10 lessons, I think are foundational, absolutely vital to good bassoon performance technique. And I hope you seriously consider them and work on them daily. These are so important as principles that I often repeat them with my college students. And when I play, I think about these principles as well to help coach myself into being a better performer. When I wrote the article, Teaching the Beginning Bassoonist in 2000, I incorrectly identified the Weisenborn Bassoon School as Opus 8 Number 1. Apparently, there is no Opus number for this work. The Opus 8 Number 1 is a different collection of studies. The edition of the Bassoon School I use is published by R.O.B. Forberg, distributed by G.F. Peters Corporation. As you progress in the studies, uh, you may need to know additional fingerings. And please be aware that I've supplied for free uh, standard fingerings on the bassoon that you can find at toread.net. You may download and print out this PDF. Now, let's move on to the Lesson 10 materials. In a prior video, I introduced the difficult fingering E-flat 3. In this lesson, I will have another difficult fingering, C-sharp 3 or D-flat 3. I recommend to you again the website by Professor Kristen Wolf Jensen. She's got some videos on playing this C-sharp 3 that I think are excellent that can be companions to what I give here in this video. In the English language, when we say someone is all thumbs, that's usually a comment on how clumsy they are with their hands. However, on the bassoon, the thumb has to be the most agile member of your fingers. Particularly, the left thumb has incredible things that it needs to do. You've already learned about the flicking that the left thumb needs to do. Now you will learn about what the left thumb has to do with the C-sharp keys. To produce C-sharp 3, the left thumb must depress three keys. Often the music moves stepwise to C-sharp 3, so you must learn to roll the thumb to open the correct keys. For example, let's take a look at the Weisenborn Bassoon School on page 14. Notice how I keep the whisper key depressed. I don't lift it in the first measure. Instead, I roll my thumb back and forth. Similarly, in measure three, I don't lift the thumb. Here it is again. This will take a good deal of practice to master this technique, but it's absolutely essential if you're going to play smoothly to and from C-sharp 3. 